Okay, so good morning. I'm Ludmila Yanda, and today I'm going to be talking to you about teaching data cleaning and visualization with our inspired custom uh, scratch blocks. So I think that my talk was scheduled first in order to ease us into R by, by starting with something a little bit more simple. Um, so I work at Amplify. Uh, Amplify is a K through eight education publisher. We have print-based, online, and hands-on materials. And I work on our science team. So today I'm going to tell you about a science unit that we've developed using scratch blocks to teach data visualization. So just quickly about the team that I worked with. Um, my team consisted of a product manager, a full stack developer, a QA engineer, uh, and a designer, uh, and then myself. So technically this work isn't my day job at Amplify. I'm a data scientist. Uh, but I was asked to join this team to give my input. So what is Scratch? Scratch is a visual programming interface. It was developed at MIT, and it's funded by a lot of big names. Uh, and it's especially for ages 8 through 16. So this middle school uh, falls really well into that range, and this is what the unit is geared towards, is middle school students specifically. Um, and a benefit of Scratch is that since you're dragging blocks instead of typing out code, you can avoid a lot of syntax errors and typos, which, you know, plague us all, but especially the early coders. Uh, and the blocks can be used to generate code for a lot of uses. It's pretty impressive, actually. But uh, at this point, there aren't any blocks for making graphics. Uh, graphics, graphs, <laughs> sorry. There aren't any blocks for making data visualizations graphs. Uh, so here's the Scratch UI. Uh, there are a lot of blocks. You can see these are just the motion blocks, these blue ones, and then all those colored uh, sections are different types of blocks, and there's kind of a similar amount of blocks in each section. Um, and you always start with this cat, which is called a sprite, um, but there are a lot of different sprites, and you can, give them, uh, you can give them costumes, you can create a background, and so on. Uh, so here's a little example of a really small thing I made in Scratch. Uh, within a repeat block, I change the background. Uh, I have the cat move 50 steps, and then I have it say hello for one second. Uh, this is a GIF, which is why it's repeating on a loop. I wouldn't do that otherwise. And you can see here that there's a lot you can do, though this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with Scratch. Um, and though there's a lot you can do, as I said, you can't uh, make graphs. So we forked the repo, and we made our own blocks uh, in order to make graphs and work with data. So in our work, we really wanted to engender an interest in computer science and uh, data science, and also make sure that it felt accessible, even, uh, especially for underrepresented groups. And um, to do this, we wanted to create a user interface for data visualization using Scratch blocks. And once we sat down and started working, we realized that we could really draw inspiration from the tidyverse and the grammar of graphics in order to achieve this. So uh, we developed, uh, or we're currently developing, a 10-day middle school science unit where students explore the EPA's air quality data on the weekly level uh, for all cities with sensor data in the US for the year of 2017. Uh, so for the rest of this talk, I want to tell you the story of how these blocks came to be and show some student work that we've observed uh, in pilot. I want to point out that while we've moved really far from this like, really simple uh, sketch that I drew out uh, months ago, uh, we're still very much in the pilot stage. Um, so we've definitely moved past things like, I don't know why I thought we needed to have some version of pipes, right? That's what those orange blocks are. Uh, things like that. We moved uh, far from here, and we have blocks that, you know, for the most part, actually work, which is really exciting. But uh, we're, this is very much a sneak peek, and we're still iterating. We're still really thinking about uh, this uh, really early stages. Just want to point that out. Um, so here we have our beloved central verbs of, the, of dplyr and the blocks that we've developed thus far. So first we have, the, we have filter, uh, which we decided we absolutely needed uh, in the UI. But we changed to have an even more explicit name, especially since students don't have to type this out, uh, right? So, and we're working with middle schoolers, so we renamed it to include data if, so that it was super clear what it was. 
Um, and right now, the way we have it, is if you put two include data if blocks one after another, it's like an implicit and. Uh, but we do have an explicit or. We're still kind of thinking through this. I don't love that, but that's where we are right now. Um, and uh, next we have the group by block. And though this, at this point, the group by works a little differently than the dplyr group by, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's, it's a lot like group by. Um, and so then you can see we have the mutate and summarize blocks. And uh, these were a little bit hard to replicate in the UI without get things getting a little too clunky. And we also didn't really need students to um, make new variables. Um, so instead, we use these function blocks. I don't love that they're named function. I think it should be something like calculate, but this is what they look like right now. Um, and uh, this allows us to do aggregation. And then uh, the last two verbs, select and arrange, we realized we didn't really need them because uh, students are, you know, they have all the variable blocks there. Um, and they're not, we do have a spreadsheet function where you can look at the spreadsheet version of the data, but they're not using that a lot. They're mainly just using graphs, so we didn't really need select or arrange. So moving on to ggplot, uh, which was inspired by the grammar of graphics by Leland Wilkinson, the kind of general layers in a graphic are uh, data, aesthetics, geometries, scales, facets, statistics, and coordinates. So with our blocks, we also start with the data, um, and then we add the aesthetics, you know, with the x and y variables. Uh, and then students can choose the geons. Right now, there are four possible graphs that the students can make. And also, students can set color, but we haven't added the ability to facet, add statistics, uh, different coordinate planes, or themes. Um, so now we're going to move into completing a task in our UI using these blocks. So here's a prompt where students are asked to choose the city where they live and another city that they're interested in and compare the air quality for the year of 2017. So this is purposefully a little bit open-ended, right? We want the students to kind of play around a bit uh, so they can make uh, different graphs, but there are a couple things that they do need to do to get at that information. Um, so first, I want to show you the filter block up close and in action and in conjunction with the or block. So here, we're filtering to only include Los Angeles and New York in the data. And uh, this is what you would begin to use for the given prompt, right? First, we're going to need to filter down to those two cities. And students are uh, explicitly taught this block a little bit. There's a little activity first uh, before they start using it. So now zooming out, I've decided to make a scatter plot in response to this prompt. So here you can see that I've set my x and y variables and I've set my graph type. Uh, however, all the dots are black, so I can't quite answer the prompt yet. So what would I want to add here to start? Color. Color. Yeah, thank you, Brooke. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, exactly. So we can add the set color blocks, and then we start to see something popping out with the scatter plot. Uh, so now we can see that uh, LA and New York City do follow a similar trend over the year, with worse air quality in the summer, but that LA seems to have more, you know, higher points, which I think we know to be true in the world, right? Um, so now let's say that I want to make a bar graph instead. So here things get a little bit tricky. Um, at this point, we've decided to use the group by block in order to communicate that uh, their two groups should be ident identified in this graph. It's a little bit of a cheat. Um, it's not a direct translation from dplyr. And it's kind of like setting color equal to a variable and then setting position equal to dodge, right? Um, so here you can see that uh, LA really does have a lot of higher bars than New York City, especially in the summer and kind of later in the year. And if I wanted to make a line graph, we would want to do the same group by trick at this point. Uh, you know, we're still thinking this through. That's where we are right now. So lastly, I want to show you that you can use the function block within the set x and y block. So here, uh, you may be able to see that the students are actually answering a different prompt uh, later on, where the students uh, not only get all of the uh, cities, but they get um, all of the pollutants that are being measured too, which is typically about five pollutants. For some places, don't measure all five. 
Um, and so here I'm just saying give me the max uh, air quality index value uh, of, you know, of all the pollutants for the city. Um, and you'll notice that this is actually the same as the last graph uh, because uh, the original data set just takes that max value because that's what you really care about with air quality. You want to know what was the highest value for a given uh, period. Um, so I just got back from observing a pilot of this unit in a middle school. And I want to show you some of the student work. So of course, students made graphs in ways that I didn't really expect or were different than what I did. Uh, here's one that I saw that I really liked. Uh, so they didn't make the scatter plot the way that I did. Um, and, but I like this for two reasons. One, you can see that there's an issue with our UI and how we're graphing categorical variables. Uh, we really need to move this over, right? It doesn't look great that the first one is getting graphed where x equals zero. Uh, but I also think that this is a really nice uh, graph because you can see that although the highest point was in Berkeley, a lot of the higher points were in Atlanta. So in general, the air quality is a bit worse in Atlanta. Um, uh, however, I do think that this is interesting. They added color, but not in a really meaningful way, right? Because the cities are already separated out, so the color doesn't really do anything for this graph. So I like this next graph because the student pair actually added color in a way that added a third piece of information. They looked at the EPA's guidelines, and they made all the healthy points green, and anything above that they made red. So I thought that was really cool. And here they're comparing uh, Berkeley to Boston. Uh, so this next graph shows some students getting a little crazy and not quite answering the prompt either since they use state instead of city. Um, but I really like that they added multiple ore blocks. They really went for it. They played around with it. Um, and that also made us think that, you know, maybe the way that we're um, structuring the ore blocks that should look more flat if they're adding more ore blocks because right now it kind of communicates like a weird hierarchy. It looks a little bit strange. So that gave us something to think about. Um, and even though this is a messy visualization, the students said that themselves. They were like, whoa, this is too much. Like, uh, so I think that it was a good learning experience for them, too. I think part of this is them making graphs that maybe aren't the best graphs, right? Um, I think that's part of learning about our data always. Um, so also, we noticed one really large point that you might be able to see at the top right corner in California. And we looked it up. And it turns out that it's a real value from a week that had a forest fire. So I thought that was really interesting that the students unearthed that. Um, so this final graph is actually answering an earlier prompt where the student just looked at their city, or the city that they were interested in. And the student actually stayed after class to add all of these color blocks, which I thought was great. Um, and I want to point out that they actually use the color scheme from the EPA. So say what you will about this color scheme. Um, I think it's a really great visualization, right? Because immediately you can see that there are only a couple weeks in, this is Los Angeles, where um, the air quality was considered good. And there was even one week where it was considered unhealthy. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, so finally, I want to show you something that our devs sent along and asked me to replicate in R in order to check if our UI was performing as expected. So does anyone want to guess which graph was made um, in R versus the one that was made in our UI? Just call it out. Yeah, the one on the left. Someone has some sharp eyes. Uh, so. Uh, it is, it's, it's the one on the left, but I think it's cool that it's pretty close. Um, and what's even more fun is to compare all the lines of code that I used to make the graph in R uh, to the ones that I, uh, to the scratch blocks, right? So granted, some of the code at the bottom is just to make the graphs look exactly the same. Uh, you don't need all of that. But at the same time, there is a lot of necessary dplyr and ggplot code there in order to get the same graph, you know, regardless of looks. And I think that it was exciting that you can see that even with a small set of blocks, the students can make pretty involved graphs. So it's pretty cool. And they can really drill down to specific uh, pieces of information. Um, so in conclusion, uh, I want to say that we're still working, uh, but we have a clear proof of concept that a UI can be built for students to make tidy verse inspired visualizations using scratch blocks. 
And furthermore, I think this work is ripe for a lot of thought and research around uh, teaching coding from things like how to name the blocks, whether they're the order of the blocks should matter. You might have noticed that um, at this point for us, they don't. Um, I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, and also, you know, explicit, how explicitly to teach different uh, pieces of this. Um, and there already is a really good you know, growing body of research on scratch blocks and on teaching coding, but I think that this you know, could add to that body of research by specifically adding this data visualization piece um, and data science in general. And most importantly, I want to say during our pilot, in a pretty diverse public school, I observed a lot of students working diligently in the UI and really enjoying their work. Um, they made a lot of graphs. They were able to iterate on those graphs really easily and spot patterns and make conclusions based on those graphs, which is really exciting for the next generation of data scientists. Thank you.